Today's story is about a woman who envied her roommate and took everything from her roommate. Watanabe's parents were worried when she didn't come home as she had promised. The family had planned to gather for breakfast on Christmas morning, but she didn't show up even after Christmas morning had passed. Her mother grew increasingly concerned and kept calling her, but she didn't answer the phone. Worried, her mother immediately reported it to the police. Sawako Watanabe a 24-year-old woman living in Japan was born and raised in a small rural village. Her father ran a flower shop from a young age and seeing this, Watanabe also aspired to open her own flower shop like her father. In 2015, Watanabe moved to Osaka a larger city to gain experience and make money. The bustling city was exciting to her and she thought living with roommates would provide companionship and ease her loneliness. She got along well with her roommates and diligently saved money while working at nearby restaurants. After a few peaceful months, a new roommate moved into Watanabe's house. The new roommate was Tarumi Morishima, 29 years old, who had a part-time job. She wasn't very talkative but maintained a cordial relationship with other roommates. Before Morishima came to Osaka, she had a painful story that no one knew about. Her hometown was Hiroshima far away from Osaka. She lived there with her mother, her mother's boyfriend, and two younger brothers. Her mother's boyfriend was a violently aggressive person, subjecting her mother to verbal and physical abuse, even threatening her with a baseball bat. Morishima lived in constant fear and eventually, the abuse escalated to sexual assault. She endured all this silently afraid to tell anyone especially her mother, who was already suffering. In her first year of high school, she became pregnant with her mother's boyfriend's child. Unable to confide in anyone or seek help, she suffered in silence and missed the time for the abortion. Ultimately, Morishima gave birth secretly in her home. Without proper care, the child was stillborn and she disposed of the body alone. After these traumatic events, Morishima's personality grew darker. She became secretive hiding her feelings from everyone. As time went by and Morishima became an adult, she came across an online post looking for roommates. Seeing that the place was far from her home in Osaka, she saw it as a chance to leave her past behind. Without hesitation, she decided to move out of her current place. Because of her family's difficult financial situation, Morishima had to quit school early and couldn't even dream of going to college. She worked hard to make a living, but her only option was part-time jobs and her income was low. Living in Osaka with Watanabe, Morishima began comparing their lives. She felt different emotions toward Watanabe, who seemed to have more money a more stable life and the love of her family. Driven by jealousy, Morishima started stealing money from Watanabe, starting with small amounts and eventually stealing her identification card. She then changed her appearance to resemble Watanabe, removing glasses like her and applying similar makeup. Using Watanabe's name, Morishima successfully obtained a $20,000 loan from a lending company, which thrilled her. With the money, Morishima moved out of Watanabe's house to a small apartment about 300 meters away and spent extravagantly. It was her first taste of financial abundance, but the joy was short-lived as she nearly exhausted the money. Worried about repaying the loan on time, Morishima feared that if the lending company contacted Watanabe, she would find out about the secret loan. Filled with anxiety, Morishima's thoughts turned extreme. On Christmas Eve of 2015, Morishima called her former roommates and suggested having a Christmas party together at Watanabe's house. The plan was for Watanabe to come to Morishima's apartment first, prepare the party food together, and then take the food to Watanabe's house. However, when the time passed and both Watanabe and Morishima didn't show up, the friends texted Watanabe where she was. She replied that she and Morishima were at Morishima's place preparing food for the party and would be there soon. After a few minutes, only Morishima arrived at the party. She told her friends that Watanabe was still preparing at her apartment and would be there soon. But then, Watanabe sent a message saying to friends she had suddenly become busy and couldn't make it to the party. Morishima told her friends that Watanabe might have gone to meet her ex-boyfriend. Despite the awkwardness, the Christmas party continued without Watanabe. Meanwhile, on Christmas Day, Watanabe had planned to have a meal with her family, but even on the 25th, she didn't call and her mother tried to reach her, but received no response. Worried, her family also tried to contact her workplace, but her boss said she had gone absent without leave. Shortly after, the owner of the restaurant where Watanabe worked received a text message from Watanabe, 
apologizing for her unauthorized absence. At the same time, her family also received a text message from her, reassuring them not to worry. Upon seeing this message, Watanabe's father became suspicious. He knew his daughter was warm-hearted and found it strange that she would send just one message in such a situation without any other calls. He felt that this message might not have been sent by his daughter, so he immediately reported her missing to the police. The police began tracing Watanabe's movements and found that around $800 had been withdrawn from her bank account on Christmas. CCTV footage around the ATM revealed that it was not Watanabe who made the withdrawal but another woman. During the investigation, her roommates were questioned, and it was revealed that the last person to see Watanabe alive was Morishima. On December 29, the police visited Morishima's apartment and forced open the front door, where they found a gruesome scene. They discovered parts of a dismembered body, along with what appeared to be the murder weapon, saw. Even more shocking was the nearly skeletal remains found in the bathtub, immersed in liquid. Moreover, when they checked the freezer, they found body parts meticulously separated into bags. The police began collecting the remains, but some parts were missing. They searched Watanabe's house to find the rest, and in the drawers and cupboards, they discovered more body parts that all matched Watanabe's DNA. The cause of Watanabe's death was suffocation due to neck compression. Sleeping pills were also detected in her body, indicating that the crime had been premeditated. The police checked Morishima's computer and found search records related to sleeping pills and ways to commit the perfect crime. Morishima was promptly arrested, but she vehemently denied the crime, claiming that she came home to find Watanabe already dead and that she panicked and dismembered the body alone to protect Watanabe's family from the shock and grief. Morishima's lies didn't hold up for long. She eventually admitted to strangling Watanabe to death and withdrawing $800 with her ATM card, some of which she used to buy tools to dismember the body. As the investigation continued, more bizarre actions of Morishima came to light. She not only dismembered the body but also boiled parts of it in a pressure cooker and ground some of it in the food waste disposer. The roommates, who had thought Morishima and Watanabe were getting along well, were shocked to learn the truth behind the heinous crime. Morishima did not hold any special grudge against Watanabe. She was simply envious of what Watanabe had and had the opinion that killing her might be a way to take her money. There are various analyses regarding how Morishima became a murderer. Some speculate that her previous experience of abandoning a baby after giving birth made her think that taking a life was not a big deal. Others suggest that she might have been in urgent need of money. Some sympathized with Morishima, considering her unfortunate childhood where she suffered sexual abuse and forced pregnancy from her mother's boyfriend, which might have cruelly shaped her. Afterward, Morishima was sentenced to life imprisonment. Despite being a first-time offender, her methods were too brutal, and she persistently denied the murders while telling lies. Currently, she is serving her sentence in a Japanese prison. According to recent reports, Jerumi Morishima changed her name to Nagata Morishima. This incident sparked various opinions in Japan due to Morishima's unfortunate childhood and the circumstances surrounding the case.